Hello there, today we're going to look at Beyond a Star Better Planning with Transformers via Search Dynamics Bootstrapping by Fair at Meta. This paper teaches a language model how to perform planning in the sense of it teaches it how to think about a planning problem and you know what steps you have to do to plan ahead. And applications of this are in this paper, kind of game applications. So for example, this game right here, this Sokoban puzzle, where this person here has to push all the crates into the respective places. So any crate needs to go to a space at the on the floor, but you can only push you cannot pull. And thus, if you push, for example, this crate down here, the game is over because you have no way of getting it back. So planning ahead is really important in these situations and in many, many real world situations. This paper tackles planning using transformers, uh, or tra planning using language models in general. So that's what the paper largely is about. Uh, we'll go on how they do it, uh, they do it via bootstrapping from a planning algorithm called a star. And we'll go what kind of results they have at the end, they're going to be they're going to be at a place where they have this model called search former. That model not only learns or has learned to plan and output optimal plans, but it has learned to do so in fewer search steps than standard A star would take to output optimal plans. And that's pretty cool. So we'll see how they do that. To be said, this paper, we've discussed this in our Saturday uh, paper discussions on discord. So almost every Saturday, we have paper discussions um, on discord, uh, where we talk about different papers and, and look at them in depth. So a lot of the things I'm going to say right here are actually sourced from the community. If you want to attend paper discussions, or even present something to the group, you know, feel very free to come. It's not recorded. So any stupid questions can be asked freely uh, without any consequences whatsoever. There are, by the way, there are even almost daily paper discussions going on on Discord at various times. So it's a very lively place. All right, let's dive in. Planning, what is planning? Planning is um, very related to something like reinforcement learning, but it's also a little bit different. So it's kind of the same and kind of different. What you do in planning is you have a start and you have a goal. And let's say this is like a maze task, maze tasks are very often used in, in planning tasks, just to illustrate. So in a maze task, you can either move like laterally, or down. Okay, and so you will have to find a path from the start to the goal with these steps. Uh, but your the challenge is there's some some walls where you cannot go. So there might be a wall here and a wall here and a wall here and a wall here. So you'll have to somehow find a way around those around those walls. Now, we could just do it, right, we could just go and train a an reinforcement learning agent. And every time it crashes into a wall, we're like, No, that's not good start over and so on. But this is it's workable in a game scenario, where we can restart the game. Uh, but it's not workable in a scenario where we're actually in the real world, or we can't restart or something like this. Uh, once we crash into a wall, we're actually kind of hurt. And thus, we don't want to do that. What we want to do is we want to plan ahead. So planning is like doing this here, but in your mind. So in your mind, you walk ahead, you're like, Okay, what happens if I do this step? Okay, I would be here. What happens if I go there? I can't do that. Okay, so maybe I consider going here. Oh, that might work out. And I'm going here, going here, this looks good going here, um, a bit too far. So I kind of backtrack backtrack, go here, right? Um, now the backtracking isn't actually doing steps back. But it just says, Okay, if I go if I reach here, that might be a bit too far. So let me go back in my thinking process to this point here. And let's, in my mind, choose a different path to go along. So you can see that planning is a lot like acting in the world, except it's in your mind. And the only difference is you can sort of at any point, 
uh, choose a different path in the past. So if you go down one path, and you don't like it, then you can just say, well, okay, how about that we don't do that? How about we go down here? And you cannot do that in the real world, because in the real world, you would have to actually f do the steps back until you're in in this state here again. But in a plan in a fictitious world, you can. And, and that's the entire difference. So you can immediately see why that is super useful in especially in scenarios where going down one path could lead you into a situation where you can't go back anymore because you've pushed a crate as against the wall and you can't pull it anymore. And yeah, so I hope you can see a little bit the difference. So it's not huge, but there is a difference. The other difference is the output of a reinforcement learning process, let's say is is a policy, right. And the the goal there is to to maximize reward using the policy in the world, the output of a planning process is a plan. And that plan, so the most basic, the most basic plans are the actions that you are going to take, right? So it says, okay, first go down, then go to the right, then go to the right, then go down, then go down, then go left, down, right, right. That's the output. So the output is is the plan itself. Now, planning can be infinitely complex, right? So for example, you can have conditional plans, you can, uh, you can say, well, if you know, go down, go right, go right, in in case there is nothing here, which maybe you don't know ahead of time, in case there is nothing here, go there, in case there is something there, go around it. That could be a plan that so the plan could be the entirety of if this, then that and so on. The plan um, can be conditional, the can plan can be probabilistic, and so on. In this work, we only consider very simple scenarios where the plan is in fact, the steps you're going to take in order to reach the goal. The precondition in our setting is to have a model of the world. So that's also good in games, because you know, exactly, right, if I give you the situation, if I give you, you're here, here's the goal. And then here are the walls right here, you know exactly what's going to happen. If for example, you make a step down, you will be you will be in this situation right here. You know exactly what happens if you make another step down, you can't do that. Right. So having an accurate world model is is giving rise to a, a subfield of planning that is quite easier than places where you don't even have an accurate world model, right, then you have to sort of plan ahead in a abstract, or in a learned world model or in, in so on. So um, yeah, just wanted to set the framing for planning a little bit, because people tend to confuse it with sort of reinforcement learning, which is fair, because they're very similar, except um, reinforcement learning actually acts in the world. And planning doesn't planning just mentally acts in a fictitious world that could be an accurate or non accurate representation of the real world. In this case, it's an accurate representation. All right, going back. Okay, it makes it even it makes it even more difficult the fact that um, the fact that what we're going to do is actually doing some sort of learning, but in the acting in the planning space. So we'll consider the planning dynamics as the real world. And there we will actually do a learned procedure. So uh, sorry, um, you must be more confused now than you were at the beginning. But safe to say, uh, LLMs usually struggle when it calls comes to solving planning and reasoning tasks, right? People know that LLMs are really good at creative writing and so on. But once you give them like a, a thing where they need to do multiple steps of reasoning or sort of looking ahead how to reach a goal and, and plan that out. They're usually not that good people have tried to do chain of thought and tree of thought and whatnot. But they're more crutches than anything else. So and they say in many cases, these uh, techniques lead to worse performance, for example, due to self enforcing. In the other hand, existing 
traditional planning and search techniques, they usually work really well, right? We have from simple to sophisticated planning algorithms. If you give them a planning problem and the planning problem you define in form of a graph, right? Uh, so um, what we saw up here, that could be excellently, I'll draw it again, that could be excellently displayed as a as a graph, right? Every place that you could possibly be here is a graph node. And um, if if the if I can reach one node to the other with a given action, I will have a directed and possibly even weighted edge right here between the graph nodes. And planning in this case just results to a search for the shortest or respectively lowest cost path through the through the graph right here. And I can implement that in a simple case with something like a, a breadth first search. Um, so planning is a well established discipline. So it's it's a bit weird, not weird, but there is a bit of a discrepancy between the power of large language models, and the the simple simplicity of planning algorithms that just still do much better than LLMs at planning stuff. All right, so th what they do is they say, they demonstrate how to train transformers to solve complex planning tasks and present search former transformer model that computes an optimal plan in fewer search steps than symbolic planning algorithms such as a star search. Uh, okay. I have to preface all of this by saying what what they're going to do in a in the simplest case is they're going to have this problem, right? And they're going to let a classic planning algorithm run, right? The classic planning algorithm is going to is going to do like, okay, let's go here. Okay, let's consider this. Ah, can't do this. Okay, let's go here. Okay, uh, let's consider this. Can't do this. Let's go here. Let's go here. Let's go here. I'm um, not sure if that's still right. Let's maybe try up here. No, no, that seems wrong. Okay, let's maybe go further down here. Ah, okay, now we reach the goal. Like this whole sequence of what I just did this on oh, maybe here. Okay, no, that seems good. That seems not good. That I'll, that's a sequence of steps, right? Every step, including the ones where I say, Oh, no, let's not go here. Let's go somewhere else. Or the thing where I say, mm, not sure if this is right. Let's consider something up here. All of this can be just expressed as a string of language like I just did, I just sequentially did a few actions, which in turn, can be made into a, a sequence of tokens, right? Like, l like, for for sake, better sake, like, let's go down. <laughs> let's go down. Oh, no, we can't go here. Uh, how, you know, um, let's go right and so on. Those are tokens, right? I can make I can build the language model across this. So this is a token, this is a token, it's actually the same token. This is a token. So I can define a vocabulary over this language. And then I can train a language model on it, I can train a language model to exactly um, learn this language. Right? And then the only point is if if I do this for many different maze tasks, uh, in different variations and so on. And I always encode the situation here in language, and then I encode the plan here in language, or sorry, the planning algorithm. And then at the end, I encode the plan itself, right, the what I actually want to do in language, that defines that defines a language that defines a sequence of tokens, and I can teach it to a language model to just take in this language, and output the same. So if I next time only feed the description of the problem, it can itself output the search dynamics and the final plan. And, and that's it. So when they say, we demonstrate how to train transformers to solve complex planning tasks, um, it computes the optimal plan in fewer search steps than symbolic planning algorithms such as a star search. That's what they mean, they train a transformer to mimic a planning algorithm, and then they have a technique to actually reduce the number of steps here. Um, that being said, I have a problem with them saying here, compute an optimal plan, because 
this these are language models and they're subject to any shortcomings of language models including their stochastic they are um prone to hallucinations and so on so whether or not what comes out down here is an optimal plan is completely non-guaranteed right they measure it experimentally and they find yes actually in many cases what comes out at the end is an optimal plan like that's fine but there is no guarantee that what comes out is even a valid plan um, or an optimal plan so keep that in mind as we go through here they build a data set of verifiable both valid and optimal plans and then they train a language model but what comes out just mimics the style of planning there's no guarantee that it actually results in true plans and you may think oh well that's kind of disheartening and so on but what the paper the paper's idea isn't to build the best planner in the world the paper's idea is can we explore the post like what happens if we teach a language model how to think about planning problems and that's the part in the middle right so the part at the beginning that's the problem and the part at the end is the actual plan that you know the model outputs so the solution if you will now what we have previously done is always just we input the problem here and then just trained it to output the solution right that's kind of the status quo and there are some crutches in between so people have discovered well what if we then append let's think step by step or something like this and what this paper is is just kind of the the formalization not necessarily formalization but the uh, more rigorous implementation of something like this it's the question what if we teach a model how to think about planning problems meaning the part here in the middle we explicitly teach them look here is the steps you need to do in order to solve a planning problem and the main question is will it help will it help will it then output down here more often an optimal plan than if we just train it to go from problem statement directly to output okay so this is all prefacing kind of what the paper does at its core it's not trying to solve planning or build the best planning algorithm or even you know this is the way to do planning with llms and so on no what this is is simply answering the question what happens if we actually explicitly teach a language model how to think about planning problems do planning problems become more accessible to them because if yes then we can make some kind of we can say something about or against the people who say oh no planning this requires really symbolic thinking this is totally out of the reach of language models they will never be able to do it this is totally different from from kind of next token prediction right so this is where the, dom the the paper is okay I already mentioned kind of the most of this in my rant just now so let's look at actually some some things as I said this here is one of these maze tasks right you have a start uh, start cell and you have a goal cell and a plan this here is the output of the algorithm is what you're going to do and the entire in between is how you're going to reach the plan itself so the prompt is what's the what's the situation here that's the prompt so you can see there is a start tile um, there's a goal tile and there are wall tiles uh, that being said this example here I'm pretty sure is kind of wrong so the paper for one is inconsistent with itself so this notation here does not match the notation in the appendix they kind of swap things around and then um the even the the example here doesn't actually match the the situation as it's described here so if you read this paper yourself don't be confused um that's one of the things I think we discovered in our in our discussion on on a Saturday so this is the input of the planning algorithm and this is the output of the planning algorithm right so it's a plan it's what will I do in order to reach the goal and 
as I said, we must somehow go from input to output. Now, the, in classic sense, we do this with a planning algorithm. So that would be the A star algorithm. And in the new age, we would do this with deep learning, we would feed the input and do and train it to output the output end to end learning, right. And this paper says, as I said, what happens if we also explicitly teach it how the intermediate process here should look like. So what's the intermediate process? It's something like this. So after we provide the input, and here is the output, um, we also want to produce this inner thing here. And this inner thing is what they call the execution trace of a star, a star is a planning algorithm. And it pretty much does what I did before it does like, ah, oh, can I go here? Can I go here? Ah, oh, this looks good. No, this doesn't look good. Let's go back and so on. So it does this by manipulating these uh, sets of kind of closed, closed search nodes and frontier nodes and so on. And um, we'll go in a bit exactly how a star does what it does. It's a very classic algorithm. So if you already know, you will uh, follow. But if you don't just it's just some algorithm that internally does some steps. It's important to consider the steps it does internally, the trace, then leads to the plan, right? It's different than the plan, the trace, the trace is just how the planning algorithm goes about computing the plan. Now, what's interesting is um, the plan can be optimal or not optimal, right. And uh, for example, a star under certain assumption is guaranteed to produce an optimal plan, meaning a plan that will reach the goal with the shortest cost or the shortest distance. And maybe there's multiple optimal plans for the same problem, right. But um, if a star will certainly find one of them, how it finds that so the trace here, <laughs> that is um, different planning algorithms differ in that even though maybe all of them are guaranteed to find you an optimal plan, how long this is, and how complicated this is, differs from planning algorithm to planning algorithm. And even within the same planning algorithm, it can be due to like tie breaking and so on, how the order of in which you do things that this is long or short or whatnot. So a breadth first search and a star are both guaranteed to give you uh, the shortest path in a maze task. But I think so at least. I think so. <laughs> um, but they will have really different execution traces, right. And why people use different planning algorithms, even though all of them are giving them a optimal plan is exactly because some planning algorithms manage to reach an optimal plan, uh, way sooner with way fewer internal steps than others. So our goal is going to be can we train a transformer to go from input to correct output and by correct output, we mean an optimal plan or a nearly optimal plan for big problems with the shortest possible in between shortest possible execution trace. So now would be a time to see what a star actually does. So if we go to the to the a star algorithm on Wikipedia, the a star algorithm is essentially a Dijkstra algorithm with and you can see right here, here, the blue is always the currently kind of best candidate for the optimal plan. And red is everything that's been explored already. And green is what's called the frontier. Um, so anything that's green, in, in every step, the algorithm chooses one of the green points. No, this could even want be one of the green points at the top, right? So it just chooses one of the green points, and then considers all the steps it could do from there. And kind of explores that and then it considers the next green point. And you can see, if you were to do a breadth first search right here, um, you can probably imagine that, for example, that the top left or the left hand side and the top uh, hand side of this picture would also be explored. Yet this a star algorithm for some reason knows how to kind of go towards the goal because the goal is at the, the bottom right. And um, that is 
the advantage that a star has above like really classic graph searches, it can sort of go in the direction of the goal. And it does that by having what's called a heuristic. So this is the last thing we'll discuss about a star. So a, what a star will do is it will start goal, it will explore, it will explore, and so on. And when it chooses to explore, it will always consider two things. One, what's the distance from the start, right? So for example, this node right here only has a distance of one, whereas this node right here has a distance of three. In that sense, I would rather explore this one right here, because if I find a path to the goal, then this one right here costs me less than this one right, sorry, than uh, this one right here. So if, if for some reason, these nodes turn out to be the goal or next to the goal, right, I, I don't, I don't know how to get I don't know how to get here yet. Um, so if they for some reason turn out to be the goal, I would rather have re goal reached in one cost rather than three. Now, on the other hand, um, what a star does, it says, yes, yes, but like, what about this, this node up here? Clearly, also, that has a cost of one, right? So should, and you as a reasonable person would say, No, I probably should consider this node right here. Why? Because just it kind of seems closer to the goal. And that's the second thing that a star considers, it's what's called a heuristic. And the heuristic very often in these spatial planning tasks is just the air, the distance to the goal, in terms of like, as the bird flies. So for or the Manhattan distance or something like this, or the L2 distance, just what's the distance to the goal? Because if that becomes smaller, then that's kind of a good sign. Now this could be misleading, because upon reaching the middle, you could notice that there is a big fat wall here, and you were actually misled. And then you have to somehow go around it. But still, in general, that's a good idea. Um, so these we call these heuristics. And one special property is what's called an admissible heuristic. An admissible heuristic is always one that always underestimates the distance to the goal. And something like the L2 distance or the Manhattan distance in these maze problems, it has this property, like there's literally no shorter way to get from one point to the other point than the L2 distance. Um, if if these are like spatial search problems, right? So as long as the heuristic underestimates the goal, the way a star mixes these two numbers, distance from the start, plus distance, heuristic distance to the goal, will always guarantee that the result is an optimal plan. Okay, so you can see an execution trace right here. Um, but yeah, as I said, this this here, it's actually wrong. Uh, I don't think I don't think it considers it considers this piece of wall right here, if I recall correctly. So we will we will not look at it. <laughs> the the last thing um, is that if we are at any given place in a star, and let's say, let's say, um, the goal is here, and we could expand this node, and we could expand this node, both are exactly equivalent, right? Both have the same cost from the start, both have the same heuristic distance to the goal. So there we have to break ties, right? So in order to explore the children of a node, sometimes we have to, to do tie breaks. Um, if we consider the order in which we explore stuff, uh, we have to kind of order them in some way, you can do this deterministically, you always get the same result, or you can do this non deterministically. Now, in this case, it doesn't make any difference. But if you think that, okay, there might be actually a wall here, which you don't know yet about, right, then the order matters. So the random choice of which of these ones you expand, they're, they're exactly the same to the A star algorithm, but the random choice will lead either to a longer execution trace, because you have to backtrack and do something else, or a shorter execution trace. So that's a one crucial piece of this paper. So they will, um, they will execute a star and then train two different models. One they call solution only, oops, solution only sequence. And that literally is just prompt, which is the 
input the how does the world look right encoded in some tokens and then the output which is plan so they, they and they produce that data set synthetically by creating different instances of problems different mazes different sokoban puzzles and then running a star in order to come up with an optimal plan and then they just put the plan and then the other hand they do the same but as i said before in between prompt and plan they put this trace so it's important now to consider so this here will be the input to the language model and then the language model will be trained to produce these both of these right here so the goal is to teach it how to think about the planning problem and only then output the plan at the end the measurement is going to be twofold first is the plan even correct or is it even optimal so is it correct does it reach the goal without running into a wall second is it optimal and only then we're interested in how how long is how long is this trace right here you know did is it did we plan in an efficient manner so we can train that and what they do is they train a encoder decoder a t5 architecture these plans uh, sorry these execution traces they can get really long uh, so they use a and they, they train from scratch so they use a model that kind of pertains to that pertains to training from scratch um, which is a t5 so this is not a super big we train gpt11 on this this is a relatively modest model size they because because they still have such long sequence lengths um it still costs them a lot of gpu time to do that and they you can see they use rotary position embeddings which are good at sort of dynamic length stuff and, and really long stuff and then what that does is and we can maybe jump ahead to the results already a little bit what that does is as you can see right here um the search augmented models even the small ones they outperform the solution only models so there's a big solution only model and you can see it needs a lot of training examples to reach barely the same performance as the search augmented models and this quite this quite clearly um shows so here we have um correct results no, that doesn't make any sense correctly solved test tasks that makes a lot of sense um so these are deterministic and non-deterministic non-deterministic is we shuffle the order in which things are done without loss of generality um but in both cases you can see the search augmented ones so when we teach the language model how to think about the planning problem they need a lot less training examples um even though the, the sequences are longer right so the plan being further down could make you think well there's more noise so maybe it even gets worse no it gets better and the search uh, the solution only models so the ones that directly go from input to plan they need a lot more training examples in order to reach the same performance so that means teaching language models how to think about planning problems makes them better at you know doing planning whereas with a lot of with if you don't explicitly teach them how to do that then they need a lot of data to figure it out themselves and if it, maybe they in other experiments it seems like they don't actually even reach um the the performance at all so that's that's really interesting i think um and you can see even the the small models right here uh they they really outperform on small training examples uh they really outperform the solution only models now th there's a lot of stuff here like their optimality criterion is one out of 64 so they they, they sample 64 times and then take the best of that and so on i don't want to go much into that right here other than saying okay they can now do this they can train something that kind of mimics the execution trace of a star now what do they do from then they say let's move beyond that 
we implement a method to shift the distribution with which the decoder generates execution execution traces. So first, they train a model like they just did on the non deterministic a star implementation, non deterministic is important, because that introduces some variance into the mix, right. So the same input problem can actually have different execution traces to reach the same or actually an equivalently cheap plan, there can be many optimal plans. But even if, if it reaches the same, or if it reaches a different plan, the execution trace in the middle is going to be different, because we break ties randomly, we order children exploration randomly, and so on. Um, so they say they merely change the order in which the different nodes are searched while still respecting a stars heuristic cost, heuristic and cost calculations. So this induces additional variance into the length of each execution trace. The resulting search augmented model will then approximate the probability distribution with which the training sequences were generated. Once they have that, they use that model to generate um, execution traces and plans. So imagine this, you have a data set, the original data set, you have input, trace, plan, right? And that trace has a certain length. Now what they're going to do is they're going to take the same input, they're going to generate a trace and a plan, they check if the plan is optimal, right, they can do that by comparing it to the cost of the A star plan, if it has the same cost, it is optimal, because A star is guaranteed to find an optimal plan. Um, and if the trace is shorter than the one up here, they replace it, they replace this training sample, with this training sample in the training set. Once they've done all of that, they now train a new um, model on just the new training set, which is per definition has shorter execution traces for the same input problems uh, producing all, all optimal plans that by construction, this data set, same inputs, all plans are optimal, but the traces are shorter. Now the question is, does this new model actually also reach optimal plans with shorter execution traces? And the answer is yes. Um, and that's pretty cool. Now, here is where I have a bit of trouble with this paper, namely how to interpret this. Um, what they say at different points in the paper is something like, yeah, so for example, this search former model no longer imitates a star search and has instead discovered a new way of solving planning problem using fewer search steps. And there is where I have a bit of a problem. Um, there's two two things that can happen here. One, obviously, if let's say, if you if you do this, um, and you actually discover a shorter trace for also an optimal plan, it could totally be it could totally be that it has somehow found a way to right produce a trace that's shorter, because it's unconstricted, right? It doesn't need to follow any algorithm it just outputs tokens. So you just sample some tokens, and it can output whatever, as long as it produces the correct plan. Um, it's, it's fine, right. And if it produces the correct plan, and if it does so in a better way than if you leave out the trace, all together, which we did in the before experiment. What that means is that the trace here is actually helpful. But the trace is not the A star trace from up here, the trace is just something it output. So that's where the authors base their claim on Oh, it has found a better way it does it no longer it deviates from what A star would do it has found a better way to do what it's doing. I don't know if that's correct. <laughs> what I th what what is entirely possible too. And again, in on Saturday, we we talked at length at this, which I find much more plausible is that you already told us that these execution traces had different lengths, depending on kind of the order of execution. Didn't we just sort of, um, and we trained it with this variance included, right? So isn't it just possible that all of these shorter execution traces are still completely valid a star traces, uh, but, um, but just the shorter ones 
right? Because what we do is we sample and if it's shorter, we include it in the data set. So we have a selection bias to the shorter traces. It's still extremely possible that these are all valid A star traces, but just in a sort of non deterministic Turing machine style, the traces that with with ran with the random tie breaking that would have led to shorter, you know, total execution length. Um, that I find much more probable than it's some sort of ooh, deviates from a star altogether. What that means is essentially, the model has learned to kind of globally look at the problem and do these tie breaks in a in a non random way in an actual way that um, so it can kind of know how it needs to break the ties in order to then get shorter execution traces, which is nothing else than just learning a better heuristic for a star. Honestly, like if, if it's, you know, between here, and you wonder which of these nodes to expand, and there is a, a wall right here, right? Sure, if you have the heuristic of l2 distance to the goal, yes, you don't know which of these nodes to expand. But if you consider the wall right here, you do. And and that that's just a better heuristic, like, <laughs> sorry, but <laughs> I think and we thought that what happened right here is just kind of it has it has learned to break these ties um, in a more optimal fashion, still totally valid a star execution traces, except that a star doesn't have that global information available and the transformer has. And so it is equivalent to just teaching it a better heuristic. But this is never explored in the paper, it's never explored whether the resulting traces are actually valid a star traces or uh, how much they deviate from it and so on and whether these traces really s look like oh, it has learned something very new and so on that that is not explored. Um, yeah, and that's my criticism for that paper. <laughs> Other than that, it's pretty cool. They show okay, if we repeat this, kind of down like step where we replace training samples by shorter ones, so we can decrease the length of these execution traces and so on. All of that is investigated. Well, even also here, yeah, when we train models with search augmentation, then you know, we, we do get, in fact, better, better solutions, shorter solutions, more often an optimal solution, which is also interesting. So if you just train a search augmented model, or if you train these reduced length models, you actually get more often a valid solution, which is also interesting, and leaves room for interpretation. But yeah, um, that's essentially, essentially, what I wanted to say about this paper, I don't want to go too much into the experiment, because I think they're well encapsulated with what I said, and you're super welcome to read the paper itself. It's definitely interesting. It's definitely really cool work. And it definitely shows that yes, if you teach a transformer model how to think about a planning problem, it is going to be much more capable of performing planning, um, rather than you just not telling it or you just saying, well, think step by step or something like this. And you know, given that LLMs, you know, big LLMs are trained on like internet data, you can interpret like the fact that think step by step even works means that in the training data, there was some kind of thinking step by step. And that means that's a further evidence for this, like if yes, if we actually train these thinking steps, then they get better at these thinking steps. And they also generalize in this case, within the same problem domain, but they do generalize. And I think that's the major contribution of this paper. And that is pretty, pretty cool. And the the then going beyond a star and, oh, we can do fewer search steps and so on. That's a bit sus. That's it. Thank you for listening. Uh, stay hydrated. And bye bye.